Okay. Now, Jim. Can I stay up here? No, you can't. I have to join you to stay right here. <laughs> well, now, I'll take turns. Jim, uh, I know you like to work by yourself mostly. Yes, yeah. What did you feel? Just when give me Nancy... that microphone. And yeah, I'll yeah, take... yeah. Right. <laughs> How did you feel when Nancy uh, joined you in the morning? Oh, I felt uh, impinged upon, uh, and cornered, <laughs> and uh, trapped, trapped. Yeah. all those kinds of things. Right. I know. But you, the both of you, set the style, and you, Jim, on that show for so many years for a form that's going on and on and on. Don't we look like pioneers? No, that's right. It's a little wagon well, you showed up in, you know. Maybe one half the act looks like yeah, a pioneer. that's right. Did you ever have any trouble after all that time of getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was? Oh, I, I learned years and years ago that, uh, you know, if that's, the, if that's the trick you pull, and if you want to continue making the mortgage payments... Uh, that's what you do. You defy you gravity do. every morning and put your feet on the You ground. know, I also remember you did an interview with lots of very famous women. I remember the interview you did with Robert Kennedy, for example. I mean, you must yes. have had some real memorable moments in that show. I don't think I can tell him in a minute, though. Um, no, no, you can't. Kennedy went to, uh, uh, Senator Kennedy uh, told me, or their people told me, that we could ask any question except the political question. And I said, is it okay if I try to get one by you? And he said, sure, go ahead. But, uh, you know, it's, it better be pretty good. So, and this had better be pretty good if I can remember the first <laughs> one. I, so I said, how come in your book, Senator Kennedy, you don't talk about politics? And he dug me in the ribs and he said, is that your best shot? And I said, yeah. He said, I'm not going to comment on it. Oh, ouch. <laughs> I'm going to leave this to you right Goodbye. now. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I remember a lot of good times. I think that I was in school at Berkeley during the, the year that we were doing she the show together. She was 14 when she started yes, doing this course. program. And I was learning a lot there, but I learned more from being with you. I really oh, enjoyed it. Right. It was wonderful. And uh, I left the show to have a baby, and you left the show to, to anchor the baby. news. <laughs> and probably to have a baby as well. It and felt like it. It did. Yes. Bob Marshall took over the show for a year, and he liked to make phone calls all around the country. Now, not all of those conversations were terribly enlightening. And our first feature on the program uh, for a Friday would be a chat with Floyd Lee in Spivey's Corner, North Carolina. Mr. Lee, are you there? Yes, sir. How are you, Floyd? All right. This is Bob Marshall in San Francisco. Who? <laughs> Okay, we're ready if you're ready, Floyd. Yeah, I thought that was fairly dignified, actually, <laughs> compared with some of the things that went on. It was a strange period because Jim had left the show. The show was going to be replaced in the next year by Good Morning America, which was taking that time period, and AM would then sort of be transformed to a little more structured um, program. At this time, it was unstructured playtime, and we had a great production crew. We had Howard Harden directing and, and Linda Goggle, right. Agar Jakes. And these were people who loved to throw it against the wall and see what it did to the plaster, you know. There and that must was have been somebody you got through to on, the, on a phone call that you thought, like, how did, I, how did this ever work? How did I ever reach this person? They no, I wish, th I wish that could have happened, but I don't <laughs> think it did. The but ones that I wanted to did. get through to and couldn't get through to, yeah. remember those. We had a number of... Uh, issues and newsmakers, but I, I remember most of the fun things that we did. Well, I remember yeah. having fun when you were the host of the show and I was auditioning and you were very kind and I still appreciate it. Bob. You got the job Thanks. and there I went. <laughs> That's Thank the way you. it goes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Bye. Good to see you. Now, Jim Lang and I also did the show together. In fact, that's where we met. And Jim ran into a guy who wanted his job. And I will always remember Jim's gallant reply. Welcome back to AM San Francisco. And it's a pleasure to have with us today a gentleman who is going to show you how to improve your kitchen habits and make life around the kitchen a lot easier by simply applplying the science of physics. Professor Miller. Professor, welcome to AM San Francisco. Yeah. This you lovely lady is Nancy Fleming. Professor. Why can't I have a job? The like of which you have, surrounded by good-looking girls all the time. Well, I'm only surrounded by one girl. But let us not go into that. <laughs> you love that hair? Oh. I was going to say, what happened? Oh, man. what happened to our hair? We both had a lot more of it, I think we, we look a lot better now. And, that's the, and you look gorgeous tonight. No one has said that yet. Actually, a lot of people have said that, Jim, but that's all right. I'll I'm the only... <laughs> I'm the only one who saw it happen, though. <laughs> you, you knew it wasn't an easy process. <laughs> oh, you look lovely. Now, doing the show with you was great, and the thing I remember the most, it was a short period of time, 
We took tap dancing yes, lessons. Yes, does uh, shuffle ball change mean anything to you? I, it does, it's, it, but it so doesn't. It's like singing, right? Yes, <laughs> I, I'm very good. I have no rhythm and I can't sing. But I had a pair of tap shoes that were size 12 and a half with sparkles on them, and they were stolen. So if you see anybody on the street with these shoes, uh, arrest them. They're they, mine. They'd be hard to miss. Why don't you go look for your shoes now? See okay. you later. Thank Thanks. you, Don. <laughs> you know, in addition to having his own show, Albert Wilson was a frequent guest on AM. We always enjoyed him. He was a gardening wizard best known for his self-effacing modesty. If some questions were unanswered, they're right here in the book by Albert Wilson, How Does Your Garden Grow? It's an awfully good book. You can get it at Macy's or uh, you can get it at the Emporium. And it answers all the questions that beautifully written, I wrote it. <laughs> Thank you. I recognize that voice. Did yeah. we sell a lot of books for you, Albert? Yes, indeed. We did sell a lot of books. This is a beautiful rose. Now, that rose was on the first show uh, that I appeared, How Does Your Garden Grow? And it's peace, right after the war, you know, and so I thought that should be in my first show. But I had uh, many guests. Uh, I was re instructed to be sure and have some guests. And one day, the Begonia Society asked if I could uh, have them as our guests, and I did arrange. And so Sunday comes, and I brought no flowers at all. And uh, 9.30, uh, quarter to 10, and they didn't show up. And so I went outside, and I picked up from the estate some dirty old weeds. I was going to say, and, you had uh, a little trouble there. Yes, uh, your garden wasn't that growing so like well that, that day. <laughs> and pretty soon they came in. Pretty soon they came in, and uh, this wonderful lady, and... Uh, oh, my gosh, I forgot the begonia, says the fellow. And he said, I only live down the hill here, and I'll get them. And so off he goes, and so I gave a magnificent talk on weeds. And they all commented about that, and after 15 minutes, why, he shows up with a magnificent display of begonias. I moved to the side, and he intro I introduced this woman, and I said she was president of the Begonia Society, and she'd written books and all that. She said, Mr. Wilson, I never wrote a book in my life, and I'm president of the society, and that ended that. Well, do you want to know something? You really started something, because yes. all the design shops use these weeds yes. today. Good to see you again. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> man who makes his living with dirt. I always exactly. like, I like that. Exactly. Yes. Dig right in there. Yeah. Well, you know, one of our most prominent uh, AM alumni is Maury Povich. He's a man just who, one. Well, just one, one of the many, a man who's never in awe of a famous guest, and he was also most willing to tell a master storytelling a few stories of his own, as you'll see. We have a story. 1976, the summer, I am stuck in Kansas City. Now, to be stuck in Kansas City in the summertime is one thing. I was covering the Republican National Convention. Now, what possibly could happen to enthrall me during what was supposed to be a dull convention? A book called American Fried, written by Calvin Trillin, sh said that the best place to go in Kansas City for ribs was a place called Arthur Bryant's, and that's where I covered the Republican National Convention Fund <laughs> in the week of August of 1976. Well, Nancy... Here we are again. I had a good time working with you in that show. Had a years. wonderful time. We yeah. met a lot of great people. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, the I endless. met a couple of nice people. You met, a, yes, and mm. I remember one in particular yes. that you particularly enjoyed. She's a good friend of mine, yes. In place where you play, in your boat, car, home, it's everything you want to hear. And it changes with the flip of the finger. Oh, I didn't realize how embarrassing that was to see that play. You had such talented acting fingers. If I had known at that point how far you would have gone, it would have been amazing. Just, you, if, well, how'd you, you do that attention. again? How'd you do that? Let's you see if we can still do that. See? See if we can recreate I mean, I can that. Recreate it. I can dye my hair black, right? Yeah, you're a little darker. Yeah, you noticed that. So and you are. pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Point everything Women out to are me, right? always they kind are. to you, You were my they, married Jack? person for a long time. Oh. Did you mention you're married to Jim Lang on the air? No. Well, we just mentioned it there. That's, what, that's why he it's, didn't know. Everyone had told you you were so beautiful. It's mentioned right? now. It's September of 1982. It was decided to change the show again. So AM San Francisco got a new set of hosts. And for the first time, a studio audience. Take a look. Thanks, so. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, welcome to AM. Uh, this is something that I <clears throat> normally wear, and this is something that Terry decided is normally wear. No. No, I'm, I'm dressed this way for a specific reason. I'm going to do a little dancing, fame style. 